WCBI News at 10 starts now. At least one person had to be flown to an area hospital after a serious car crash in Lowndes County. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. We just spoke with troopers not too long ago. It happened at the intersection of MS 791 and Industrial Park Road just after 5. Sergeant Derek Beckham says that a man was driving west on Industrial Park Road when it was trying to cross the northbound lane of 791. That's when a black Jeep hit the side of a Mazda car. The Jeep then hit a Ford truck driven by a Starkville man, a 23-year-old man of Thaxton, driving the Mazda. Troopers say that man was flown to North Mississippi Medical Center in critical condition. Another man of Caledonia was also taken to the hospital. MHP is investigating that crash. Finding the money to repair worn out roads and bridges, it can be a financial burden on city and county governments. Now state lawmakers are offering up some help. Money gross from the lottery will go toward improving the state's infrastructure. Our Quentin Smith speaks with the county supervisor about the issue. Quentin, this will serve as some much needed relief. Absolutely, Scott. Many times cities and counties will have roads and bridges that need to be fixed, but they don't have the money to do so. Now the hope is that will soon change. To some people, this may appear to be the sound of your typical excavator. But to District 3 Supervisor Marbell Howard, it's the sound of progress coming to Octibaha County. Crews are hard at work replacing two bridges on Sun Creek Road. This first bridge is a smaller bridge. It'll probably be done in a, a couple of months. And then the other bridge is a longer, larger bridge, which probably take a little bit longer. These were two of our older bridges in the county that it started to become a little bit unsafe. So we were fortunate that we were able to get the funding sources to be able to replace these, these two bridges. Identifying bridges that need to be replaced is the easy part. Finding money for those repairs, well, Howard says that can be a bit challenging. The cost to replace the two bridges on Sun Creek Road adds up to more than $1 million. When, when you start talking about having to come up with, with, with that type of money, that can be a strain on, on a county. But now municipalities no longer have to carry that burden alone. State lawmakers have allocated $80 million gross from the lottery to go towards repairing roads and bridges all throughout the state. Bridges like this one in Octibaha County. Repairs is, is, is a expensive undertaking. So with the new lottery in place now, you know, and, and I think it's performing a lot better than what was expected. Mm -hmm. and, and that's definitely making the counties and the Board of Supervisors around the state of Mississippi happy and excited about it. Howard says knowing they have this type of help available for infrastructure repairs will go a long way in helping their dollars stretch. We're excited about the money that the lottery is, is bringing in. That will, will allow us when we start to budget for bridge replacements and road repairs, that will allow us to look a little bit further and, and um, make more repairs in, in the near future. And as a reminder, Sun Creek Road will be closed for the next few months as crews work to make these repairs. Howard says they received funds from the state's emergency bridge repair money to repair four bridges in the county. In all, the county received more than $2 million to make these repairs. Tons of sunshine out there today. Here's our time lapse from Vernon at Durham's Pharmacy. No weather worries out there on our Wednesday. We soaked up the sun. We got up to around 50 degrees now. We are cooling on down. We have that bright full moon shining overhead tonight, and we are currently now into the lower 30s in many spots here. Our forecast lows tonight, upper 20s in a good chunk of the area. So a chilly start tomorrow, but we should be back into the mid 50s. Clouds will be increasing across our region, and we may see some rain on Friday. We'll talk about that coming up. An update to the ongoing U.S. China trade war we've been following since last year. China is starting to buy more U.S. soybeans, but farmers say they won't rest until they see a new trade deal confirmed. Courtney Ann Jackson explains. Christmas could come early for some soybean farmers, but they're cautiously optimistic as they await what they hope will be an upcoming trade deal. China first imposed the tariffs on U.S. soybeans in the summer of 2018. Farmer Danny Murphy says the latest update is adding a little optimism on top of a lot of frustration. I imagine most farmers are like me. They're just kind of in limbo waiting to see what happens. And a deal would make a difference for his bottom line. Prices were already low when this started and they've continued to trend down. China 
was our largest trading partner for soybeans. The Mississippi Farm Bureau president explains just how much of a hit farmers like Murphy are taking. We lost about 20 to 25 percent uh, since uh, of our market since the tariffs have, have been uh, uh, instituted. So we're looking forward to the end of this trade dispute and and uh, getting a market that we can rely on. As for this year's crop of soybeans, a lot of them haven't been exported. They're pretty much uh, in grain bins. Uh, a lot of our guys are, are, are hoping to uh, see better markets because a lot of those uh, soybeans and corn that are in the bins are on the farm storage are there right now at a loss for last year. Murphy is among those waiting. I talked about holding on to some of my soybeans. I think everyone you get your hopes up and you think, well, if they sign a trade deal, you know, soybeans will go up 50 cents or a dollar and you hate to sell today and they sign a deal of 15th and they go up. Mississippi has sought alternate trade deals with countries like Taiwan, but Murphy says it isn't enough to fully make up for not trading with China. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. A local investor believes the vote by Amy residents to allow the sale of alcohol in the city limits will have a big impact on commercial development. Riley Martin has more from the businessman planning to give new life to an iconic landmark in the city the railroad helped build. Orrin Holly officially became the owner of the Old Park Hotel in downtown Amory Tuesday morning. That evening he was getting calls and text messages from people who heard about his plans to transform the property into upscale apartments, a restaurant, and grill. I was surprised that I got 68 texts last night uh, asking about what was going on and uh, about rentals, yes. The day of his closing fell on the same day Amory residents voted to approve the sale of beer, light wine, and alcohol in city limits. Regardless if the vote uh, had passed for alcohol, um, we had a very good investment here uh, with having the restaurant and the things we wanted to do for the city of Amory and the business here on Main Street. We feel like it's an icon being here in Amory for so long. 1926 when the building was built um, and we feel like it was a staple of the community. Uh, the alcohol we feel like is going to boost uh, revenue for us and we feel like it's definitely going to be a plus. The realtor who listed the old Park Hotel and who will act as property manager for the Park Hotel Apartments believes Tuesday's vote coupled with the renovation of the historic building will attract even more interest from developers and investors to the downtown area. We've got great leaders in our community who are going to set rules and regulations in place to um, make this a successful um, venture for people. I think that um, people are looking for some place to go. They're looking for a nice restaurant to be able to sit down and have a great meal uh, to entertain. Um, and I think it will be a, a positive asset to Amory. Holly wants to have the first floor restaurant and possibly the second floor grill open in time for the railroad festival in April. In Amory, Allie Martin, WCBI News. The one and two bedroom apartments could be ready by next January. All right, we're going to send things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. And Keith, you've got one of my favorite countdowns. A uh, graphic made for you. Which, you know, I've been counting down since well, you what, put your Christmas last stuff Christmas. Up, yeah, you put your Christmas stuff up, what, July 1st? Pretty much, okay. basically. Might well, as well. <laughs> we are closing in on the holiday countdown two weeks from today, Christmas Day, of course. Three weeks from today, New Year's Day, a new year, a new decade. But we'll concentrate on the near-term weather next and your full forecast. Stay with us. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. So pretty nice weather today. You were soaking up the sunshine. We enjoyed it. Now some of you had some snow this morning and check out big boy right here. Wow, look at that snow and he's enjoying the snow so much he's eating it with a little bit of leaf coverage to add a little texture. Uh, to the uh, morsel right there. But that's how it looked earlier this morning in some parts of the area. Tomorrow, uh, we start out on a chilly note, getting back up into the 50s during the course of the day. But some of us having a little bit of fun with the, with the uh, wintry weather over the last 24 hours. For tomorrow, though, more sunshine in the morning. Clouds gradually increase. We are looking at highs somewhere in the 50s. All that sunshine today in Tupelo, our Alpha Insurance time lapse from today. And then right at the last second here of the time lapse, you can see that full cold moon coming on into the frame here. And some of you spotting that moon, there it is, rising through the trees here across the region. 
and there it is near Octok, Mississippi this evening. So that will be large and in charge all night long. It's a chilly night out there. We've got temperatures down into the 30s and some of you are already most likely in the upper 20s, not plotting on the map, but I know we probably have some upper 20s out there right now. So let's forecast 29 degrees, a uh, light wind, uh, still a little bit of moisture out there, so we may see some uh, areas of frost again later on tonight and tomorrow morning. Yesterday, system down here in Georgia and Florida, we have some lake effect snow up here across the Great Lakes, and we have a big mass of clouds here across the central U.S. and the Pacific Northwest, and that energy will give us a chance for some showers Friday. We'll sandwich in between some rain, a nice weekend, before some more opportunities for some rain and storms on Monday. So Futurecast showing the clear conditions for this evening. We wake up to sunny skies and then the clouds will gradually build on in during the afternoon. Overcast tomorrow night into our Friday. Some showers will be possible here during the day Friday, maybe Friday night and maybe even in the early Saturday too. But most of the moisture with this system is actually going to go to our east. We're on the back side of it. So we're not really looking at a lot of heavy rainfall here Friday or Friday night, but we may see some showers here. There's the next system as we get into early next week. Monday system, maybe some heavier rain and potentially some storms, maybe some strong storms too, if we can warm up enough. Right now, it's still a bit iffy in regards to the strength of that activity on Monday. We'll continue to watch a much colder 40s next week with some sunshine. So a bit of an up and down roller coaster ride, some showers Friday, Scott. And your weekend should be relatively tame. Great weather for Christmas shopping. And it wouldn't be Mississippi if we didn't have roller coaster weather. Why right? not? Just hold on tight. Definitely, mm -hmm. right? Thanks, Keith. Well, it's the holiday season and flu season. What you need to know to protect yourself from getting the bugs when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. With Christmas break right around the corner and being around family and friends, you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself from possibly catching the flu. We'll learn about the flu vaccine in our Health Talk with Baptist. Hi, I'm Dr. Lee Richardson, a physician in the emergency room at Baptist Memorial Hospital, Golden Triangle. Tonight, I would like to talk to you about the flu vaccination. The single best way to prevent seasonal flu is to get vaccinated each year. Yearly flu vaccination should begin as soon as the vaccine is available. Most of the time, the flu peaks between December and February. It takes about two weeks after vaccination for antibodies to develop in the body that protect it against the flu infection. The CDC recommends getting your flu shot by the end of October. We're already seeing patients testing positive for the flu in the ER. Everyone six months of age or older should get the flu vaccine every year, especially those at high risk such as people with chronic pulmonary disease such as asthma, cardiovascular except hypertension, renal, hepatic, neurologic, hematologic, or metabolic disorders, including diabetes, and people who are immunosuppressed, including those with HIV. You should also not get a flu shot if you have a severe life-threatening allergy to any of the ingredients in the vaccine, especially eggs. The flu shot cannot give you the flu. The flu vaccine that is administered with a needle is made either of flu vaccine viruses that are inactive or not infectious or with no flu vaccine viruses at all. If you get flu-like symptoms, you may have other respiratory virus besides flu or you were exposed to the flu shortly before getting vaccinated or during the two-week period after vaccination. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist where we will discuss some common sense ways to keep from catching the flu. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. The best place from the best weekend of high school football season, our final top plays for 2019. See the state championship highlights next in sports. Sports with Tom Ebel. The SEC naming the conference's top players and awards. When it comes to offensive talent, no one stood out more than the gunslinger in Baton Rouge. LSU quarterback Joe Burrow named SEC Offensive Player of the Year. Burrow leading the Tigers to the college football playoffs as the number one team in the nation while breaking the SEC record for passing yards and passing touchdowns in a single season. Burrow and LSU will face Oklahoma in round one of the college football playoffs on December 28th. So Burrow is your Offensive Player of the Year. Auburn defensive tackle Derek Brown named Defensive Player of the Year in the SEC. And Coach O, LSU head coach Ed Ogeron named SEC Coach of the Year. Special Teams Player of the Year going to Alabama's Jalen Waddell. 
Bo Nix, quarterback of Auburn, named freshman of the year in the SEC. Then student athlete of the year going to Georgia kicker Rodrigo Blankenship. Blocker of the year going to Georgia's Andrew Thomas. The SEC all-freshman team will be released coming up tomorrow. Major League Baseball has officially changed the 2020 draft to the, 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 the delight. Duh, duh, duh. The delight of all college baseball. The 2020 MLB draft will be in Omaha, Nebraska, directly before the start of the College World Series. The draft would take place from June 10th to June 12th, with the College World Series beginning the 13th. The correct move to give college baseball players competing for a championship the chance to enjoy their team's success and also have a moment to have their big league dreams come true. High school football season is over. Some of the most disappointing words I'll say all year long. I miss football, and I'm sure you do too. And this weekend was some of the best high school football I've seen in a very long time down in Hattiesburg. In honor of the best weekend of the year, here's the final special edition top five plays from this past weekend of the state championships. WCBI Sports End Zone Top 5 Plays of the Week are brought to you by your local Subway restaurants. We start with number 5, the 3A state championship. Knoxby County's Marlon Windham airs one out to Anthony Little Jr. The catch takes a lick, but it doesn't matter. He gets the touchdown. Tigers fall short of a title, but great season nonetheless. Number 4, the 4A title, Tam Patterson. It looks like he gets lost in the pile, but keep the legs churning, kids, especially if you're gonna, especially if you're gonna play running back. Tam putting on a show. Corinth dominates the, to win the 4A title. Number three, the 1A state championship. Nano Waya, Donovan Turner on fourth down. He's just gonna heave one up to the big fella. Tylen Glass climbs the ladder, mosses the young man from Lumberton, and lets him know Nano Waya is your back-to-back -back state champion. Speaking of back-to-backs. Number two, West Point Special. How many times have we seen this play work to perfection? Brandon Harris rolls right, finds a wide open Jordan Rupert. Going within 20 yards of number one, West Point wins its fourth straight state championship. Then number one, a game winner. It's John Marr and J.J. Pegues. This was the go-ahead touchdown as Oxford completed an insane rally. Down 21 to three at halftime. That touchdown, giving them the lead. Beautiful ball, beautiful catch for the big fella. JJ's the number one play from the final top plays of 2019. Mantachi's McKinley Montgomery signs to join ICC softball. Montgomery has starred for the Lady Mustangs, batting 507 in 2019, along with six home runs. The All-State athlete has a North State championship and six playoff, six straight playoff berths to her name. Another lull in the college basketball schedule. We'll have to wait until the weekend before we get back to college hoops. Mississippi State men, they go on the road to New Jersey to take part in the Never Forget Tribute Classic, taking on Kansas State for an early Power 5 test. That game will be on ESPNU at 1030. Brunch with the Bulldogs is back, Scott. Then, well, you'll have to wait until Monday to catch up with Hale State Hoops, the women's basketball team on the road at Louisiana Lafayette, Monday at 11 a.m. As for Ole Miss, you'll get it all in one day on Saturday. The Kermit Davis game to start things off. Ole Miss taking on Middle Tennessee at 2 p.m. on the SEC Network. And right after that, at approximately 5 o'clock, the Ole Miss women's basketball team will face Southeastern Missouri. Cool doubleheader double in Oxford if you're looking for a basketball fix. All right, that's all we need right now that's is a it. basketball fix. Now, real quick, back to the football, that J.J. Pegues. We've, we've heard that name a lot this season. Absolutely, this and season. I think we're going to be hearing his name at the SEC football on Saturdays. All right, we'll so have to shortly. see about that. All right, thanks, Tom. We'll have a last look at your forecast when we come back. Here's our seven-day forecast. Clouds increase tomorrow. should be a pretty decent day for us. A few showers possible Friday. Sandwiched in between some rain chances will be a Saturday and Sunday that should feature some fairly decent weather. Uh, more rain, more storms possible on Monday. My goodness, by Sunday we're back in the almost to 60. Getting close. I don't know what I was going to ask. I had a thought, but it, it did not come out Roll, completely. Roller coaster? It's okay, Scott. It's one of those days. All right. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.